going on, peeps? It's Rath here, hanging out today, playing some idle heroes, and today we've got plans. Now, we've always got some plans, but today we've got even more plans. Today, we're going to answer a question that I see a lot in chats um, that not really anybody has a great answer for, or, you know, some people have good answers, it's just not everybody knows about it yet, so I'm going to make a video on it, try to help some people out. Um, that question is going to be a hero comparison. A lot of people will ask, who should I take, Walter or Bloodblade? Um, it's an age-old question, everybody asks it. But that's what we're going to dive into today. We're going to talk about which hero you should take for what situation, which one's better overall. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to jump in here to the Shadow Faction, like a so. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to look at the 10-star versions because obviously when you pick a hero, um, especially on official, if you're picking a hero to upgrade, you better upgrade it for the long haul. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in this case, 10-star versions are what you want to look at. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start here with Walter. Um, this guy is awesome. All right, they're, they're, both, they're both really good heroes. I'm going to start off with that. But uh, we're going to go through the stats, the skills, and then we'll kind of compare them a little bit and talk about where they work in PvP and PvE and stuff like that. All right? So first up, you'll notice Walter's a pretty low health stat. 291,000. Pretty squishy, but he is an assassin. Assassins don't normally have really high health stats. Um, they're more for putting out burst damage. They're assassins. Um, 30,000, almost 31,000 power. Or I guess, I don't know what you call it, attack. Is what I, that's, that's a better word for it. Um, straight out the gate. So he does have a pretty high base attack. Not bad. The armor, not really super important. 1476, they both have the same armor stat, BT dubs. Um, and 1169 speed. Um, Bloodblade does have a little higher speed stat. Three points higher. But anyways, like I said, not important. So we're going to jump down here to the skills. And the first thing here, the active skill, this is going to deal 220% of his attack damage against two random backline enemies. Poison them, dealing 60% uh, of his 66% uh, of his attack as damage each round for six rounds. That's a long dot. Six rounds is pretty long. Um, and it's also going to give a 50% chance to stun them both for two rounds as well, which is pretty powerful uh, crowd control chance right there. And it's going to gain 50% reduced damage for two rounds as well, and it can't be dodged. So when you look at that, um, on its face, already high damage output. 220% of his attack as damage isn't bad. Um, and also with that 50% chance to stun them both, statistically speaking, he will stun at least one person every time he casts his skill, um, which is great. Crowd control is amazing, especially in PvP. Not so much in PvE, you know, as often. It's still not bad in PvE, like in the Tower of Oblivion and stuff. But anyways, um, not to mention, he does get the 50% reduced damage as well, which is great for keeping him alive a little bit longer with his lower health stat. Moving over to his first passive, we have Attack Weakness 3. Ooh. This is going to increase his armor break by 40% and his attack by 35%. Um, kind of a standard perk buff for assassins. They always generally get some kind of armor break to pierce through armor, and the attack buff as well, so they hit harder. That's kind of their job. Um, anyways, the second passive here, his attack has a 100% chance to poison the target, dealing 48% of his attack damage for 6 rounds. Now, I do believe these all stack together, so his active skill will stack with his regular attack, um, but generally that's not going to happen until his basic attack is hitting someone in the back line. Anyways, the third one here, the Toximist Barrier. Mm, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. While below 50% health, he's going to poison two random backline enemies, dealing 100% of his attack damage for six rounds, and it can only be triggered one time. Generally, that's how that works. Um, but anyways, that's a pretty big dot. 100% of his attack for six rounds. If you can make the battle last for more than six rounds... Um, He's going to deal a lot of damage, even if he's already dead. You know what I'm saying? So he's got some pretty solid skills for dealing damage um, in, like, the, the dots. He's a more of a dot fighter, um, but he does have some serious burst damage with his skill, and the crowd control is always nice. So with that out of the way, we're going to jump over, and we're going to talk about the Blood Blade. The Blade of the Bloods. As you can see, he does have a little bit higher base health. Not super high. Um, 306,000. It's not a really big change. Um, but you'll see why that's not nearly as important on Blood Blade as it is with Walter. Okay? Um, the attack, pretty close to what uh, Walter's is. 28,893. Pretty much 29,000. Um, armor's the exact same. But like I said, he does have a three, uh, three higher base speed. Which isn't super important in anything other than PvP. Which means that Blood Blade will attack before a Walter naturally in PvP. What ifs? So we're going to jump down to the skills here. First up, we got the Exotic Blade. This is going to deal 148% of his attack as damage against three random enemies with a uh, with 40% extra damage each round for three rounds. That's going to be a bleed. Um, now, if the target's a Ranger, you increase that extra damage by 62% each round. All right, so he does extra damage to Rangers, which is nice. That's always good. There's a lot of Rangers out there, you know. Ice Blinks, Queen, stuff like that. Um, he's also going to heal himself for 170% of his attack as HP, and it cannot be dodged. That's 
always nice. That counters things like Mickey. A lot of people like to stack dodge on Mickey. If you can't be, you know, if your active skill can't be dodged, doesn't matter. Um, so, anyways, the heal here is going to be really, really good, and this what's going to give Bloodblade, in my opinion, a really big advantage over Walter um, in a lot of scenarios. Um, Self sustain is very, vi uh, very, very valuable, um, especially if you're a priest or something. <clears throat> Sorry, throat. If your three, uh, your priest or something gets stunned or silenced or something and can't cast a heal, Bloodblade, uh, Bloodblade's gonna be able to heal himself, which is really nice. It helps him last a little bit longer, and that's always great. Moving over, Rain Blood. Ooh, it sounds powerful. Um, each attack has a 100% chance to bleed the target, dealing 45% of his attack each damage. Um, attach, uh, attack is damage each round for four rounds. And he's gonna gain 16.8% armor break each round for four rounds. Well, I don't think it's each round. 16%. For four rounds. Either way, it's going to boost his damage a little bit. The armor break, not bad. Plus the bleed, each, uh, eat, well, the bleed's always nice. Guaranteed bleed when he attacks. That's good. A slow dot, not a huge dot. 45% of his attack, eh? But it's a dot. Moving over, this is going to increase his hit by 25%, attack by 30%, armor break by 32%, and he's going to deal 70% um, of his attacks extra damage to bleeding foes. Um, that's powerful. Okay. Because he's going to guaranteed bleed people with his uh, skills, active skill, and his basic attack. So this right here makes him hit pretty freaking hard once you've got people bleeding. Um, so really, really solid uh, passive skill here. Not to mention, obviously, the hit is nice. means his basic attacks won't miss as often. He doesn't get quite the, the attack and armor break buff that Walter does. But I think it more than balances out with the other two that he gets the hit and the, the damage to bleeding targets. The last one here, Life Drain. Whenever an enemy hero dies, he heals himself for 160% of his attack as HP. This is really obviously good in um, PvP and also in things like the Aspen Dungeon. So, the first thing we're going to talk about here is going to be PvP. Which one is the best for PvP? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. Neither is the best for PvP. Alright, I'm just going to say it. They are very close to equally useful in a PvP setting for a couple of reasons. Um... The first one here being Bloodblade. Being able to self-sustain is really valuable. Um, healing when things die is very valuable. And the extra damage he does with Bleeding Dots, plus his uh, higher spread damage, the three random enemies over Walters 2, that's fantastic. That's really good. Plus he does extra damage to Rangers, which you see a lot of Ice Blink, a lot of Queen, a lot of Demon Hunter. Very popular Rangers. Um, so this guy's going to do extra damage to those while he kind of heals himself as well. So Bloodblade's very powerful in that effect, but one thing Bloodblade doesn't have that Walter does is the crowd control. Crowd control is super duper important in PvP. If you can stun even one enemy for two rounds, you're essentially taking that guy out of the fight for two rounds, which means he's not going to be casting skills, dealing any damage at all, which slows down your enemy's uh, monster progress, you know, to get their monster skill to cast, which is a big deal. That monster can really do some serious work on your team, plus it generally buffs their team in some way as well. Um, so being able to stun, really big. The 50% reduced damage, I would say, not on par with Bloodblade's regen. But like I said, I think the big burst damage and the 220% attack on backline enemies is really powerful, coupled with the stun chance. Again, that's something that Bloodblood doesn't have, so they're kind of at a toss-up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Walter's got really good selling points for PvP with crowd control. Um, that's really solid. High burst damage, really great, and really long-lasting heavy dots, like when he gets below 50% health. That's not bad. That's definitely not bad. Um, Bloodblade kind of has the advantage when it comes to higher spread damage. He hits three targets instead of two. And he's also got self-sustain. So they're both fantastic in PvP. With that being said, when it comes to PvE, I'm going to give the edge every single time to Bloodblade. Um, he's just a better PvE hero. Okay, um, In Tower of Oblivion... You're going to want a Bloodblade over a Walter, almost guaranteed. Um, yes, the stun chance can be nice there and with Walter, but the self-regen and stuff is just its too powerful to overlook. Bloodblade's going to be more better. He's just more better. He's just more better, peeps. Um, especially in things like the Aspen Dungeon. Walter is trash in the Aspen Dungeon. I'm just going to say it. I don't care if you got a 10-star. If you got an 11-star Walter, he's still not good in the Aspen Dungeon. He has no sustainability. And that's the biggest thing in an Aspen Dungeon is being able to keep your hero alive. This is why Vesa is so popular in the Aspen Dungeon because she does great damage and she heals herself all the time. Um, Bloodblade also better in the Aspen Dungeon than Walter. He's not quite up there with Vesa, I wouldn't say, um, but he's still better for it. Definitely better for it. All right. 
With those two out of the way, the Brave Trials, it's kind of like a mix of PvE and PvP, because you're not actually, I guess it's kind of PvP-ish, but it's it's kind of a PvP. Uh, e element. Um, I would say Bloodblade takes the cake there as well because of the the wave system. You're going through wave one through fifteen. It's better to have somebody with self sustain than somebody with crowd control. Um, now, don't you know? Don't get me wrong. You can actually run both of these heroes in one uh, in a single team. Okay, there are faction auras for three shadow and three forest, three shadow, three fortress stuff like that. So you can actually run them both together, and they do work very well together. They hit really hard. They complement each other pretty well with the crowd control and one being able to self sustain. They're not bad, okay? With that being said, we'll move on to the Marauders. All right, Marauders. I actually don't have a Marauder, do I? I don't. Can I scout one up real fast? <laughs> Would you look at that? It's like I planned this or something. I didn't, but it's nice. It's nice when that works out. As you can see, I only, on my team, I've got a Walter. Why do I have a Walter? Because I don't have two Blood Blades, <laughs> all right? And this is official server, so I kind of take what I can get. But we'll go ahead and we'll swap them out. We'll drop Walter here um, for, I do have a Blood Blade. It's only five star. Not going to be nearly as strong, I can already tell you. Um, but we'll just go ahead and run a couple attacks just so you can see um, a little bit of the difference. Not really a fair comparison, 5-star to 7-star, I know. Um, we'll skip the battle, there's no point in really watching it, right? 7 million, that's not horrible for using a 5-star in there. And he hits about a million damage, okay? For a 5-star hero that I didn't even really gear up with my best stuff, um, that's not bad. You know, he's putting up some serious numbers. Alright, anyways, okay. We'll go ahead and pop a, uh, we'll pop a, a Walter back in there in Bloodblade Splot. Splot. And he'll obviously do a little more damage, of course, because, you know, he's 7-star and, and uh, Bloodblade's 5. Um, but, just a little illustration, 10 million, holy crap. That's, that was a good battle. Yeah, he hit way harder, 2.7 mil. But like I said, not really a fair comparison there. They both do pretty solid against Marauders, but since you can't stun Marauders, um, and... Likely, Walter will never drop below 50% health. Um, two of his big selling points kind of don't matter in a Marauder fight. Whereas, Bloodblade's extra damage to bleeding foes um, and the heal when he casts his skill, they still kind of count. So, I would say overall, in a PvE setting, you're going to want Bloodblade. Um, same thing with like Broken Spaces bosses. Bloodblade's likely going to do more for you than a Walter will. There's just not a lot of areas in PvE where you would say... Walter and Bloodblade are kind of even here. Generally, Bloodblade's got the edge. Now, like I said, if you run them both in your team, they will both do great damage, and they do work very well together. Um, but when it comes down to it, if I had to recommend you take one or the other, I would say take Bloodblade. Especially in an official server, where it takes so much longer to max something out. Um, you want to make sure you're maxing out somebody that's going to be useful in a very wide variety of areas, okay? And that's Bloodblade. Bloodblade is a very diverse hero. He works great in PvP. He works great in PvE. And that's two really good things. Walter works great in PvP, but not so well in the PvE arena. So, eh. You know what I'm saying? He's still great. He's still not a bad hero to take. Um, but if you can only take one, take Bloodblade. Take Bloodblade over Walter. That's my recommendation. They're both fantastic heroes in something like a seasonal server um, where you get heroes really, really fast. Um, play around with both of them and see which one you like better. That's kind of what it comes down to anyways. How does it fit your team? You know, what kind of team are you building? Does Walter fit better in that team or does Bloodblade? Because that can happen. You can have swaps ins and outs and some things will work better for you than others. Anyways, that's going to be it for today, guys. Just kind of wanted to do that little video because I get you hear that question all the time. You know, who should I take? Walter or Bloodblade? Well, I hope this answered it for you. Overall, Bloodblade. Um, but they're both still very viable heroes. And in something like Seasonal, where you get tons and tons of heroes, it's fine to take them both. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. They're both very good heroes. Uh, but the edge goes to Bloodblade. There it is. You've heard it from me. It's a thing. There it is, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please make sure to smash that thumbs up button to show your support. If you're liking the channel, make sure to subscribe as well and tell your friends about it. Definitely helps me out. And I will see you guys in the next one.